In this short video, we'll talk about the difference between a sample and a population. A population can be seen as every single observation possible. For example, what was the socio-economic composition of the German merchant fleet in 1880? Mm, the best possible way to answer this question is to evaluate every single sailor by his socio-economic background. Do you have this data? No, you don't. But you might be lucky, there, there might be a sample of 300 German merchant sailors. Well, how would that look like? The big circle equals all of the German merchant sailors in 1880. The population. So these are literally thousands and thousands of German merchant sailors. Well, and let's say 20,000 German merchant sailors in the year 1880. Okay? So the, the next circle, the next little circle, this one. Yeah? This represents a sample of 300 German merchant sailors. So 300 German merchant sailors are in here. How did we construct such a sample? Well, it's pretty easy. We simply took 300 sailors out of the population and constructed a smaller sample. We literally took them, put them into our sample. Okay. So the fundamental difference between a population and a sample is that the sample is built up by observations from the population. So in this way the population is always bigger than the sample. How can we construct a sample and most importantly, are there any dangers using this historical sample of 300 sailors we found? Sadly, yes there is. In the very first video I said that our techniques come with a lot of restrictions. If we decide to construct a sample, we always have to obey the following rule. The sample observations must be picked randomly from the um, population. Let me write that down. Uh, so, we always need to have a random sample. Okay? So, the sample observations must be picked randomly from the population. What would happen if we don't do that? Let's take a simple example. You decide to use data from the Navy archives in Hamburg. Now you might be biased. Why is that? Because you were only using data from Hamburg, you might end up having a much higher share of sailors from Hamburg. Why is that a problem? Now that you are biased towards picking observations from Hamburg, you are leaving beside sailors from Friesland or Mecklenburg. Um, sailors from Hamburg might earn more than their counterparts in the eastern parts of Germany, or maybe they have more children whatsoever. Well, the next thing we would do is called inferential statistics. In inferential statistics, what we do is we take our sample, this sample here of 300 sailors, yeah, okay, and what we would do is um, we would do, draw conclusions that are valid for the entire population. Okay? We try to draw conclusions that are valid for the entire population. We can't draw conclusions for every sailor in Germany in the year 1880 if we only observe sailors from Hamburg. If we do so, we might think that the average German merchant sailor was richer than he really was. Or maybe that the average sailor had three kids instead of two. So what we have to do is we need to make sure that we've got a random sample. Again, a random sample. This means every sailor in the population has an equal opportunity to get into our sample. Always check the sample before drawing any conclusions. There has to be a random sample. Every single observation in the, in the um, population needs to have equal chance of getting into the sample.